video, let's assume that we have a closed surface that is orientable. All right, so let's let S be a closed but orientable surface. And the primary example here is like a sphere. But I'm going to draw what you might call a lumpy sphere. All right, so there's a little bit of a lumpy sphere right there. So this is our surface S. We're just thinking about the surface of this thing. This is closed because it doesn't have uh, any boundary, really. It doesn't have any boundary as far as the surface goes. So, so this is closed means no boundary. Closed means no boundary. And orientable means that as we assign our normal vectors, they change continuously. So I'm trying to draw some of these pointing out toward us. The idea, though, is that they are changing continuously. Probably this one is not going to look like that then, right? Um, but the idea is the same. So it's orientable. And now the way I've drawn this, I've tried to draw all of these normal vectors from the Gauss map as pointing outward away from the bounded region. Okay, And so that's what we're going to call. So in this case, we have two choices. Either these vectors can point outward or they can point inward. And there is a definite, um, it's, it's unambiguous, right? Um, for a closed surface, it, the closed surface encloses a bounded three-dimensional region. And as long as our vectors are pointing outward from that region, then we say that this is positively oriented. Okay, so this is another definition. S is positively oriented if and only if the Gauss map or the unit normal vectors n point outward from the bounded region enclosed by S. All right. Now, if they point inward, we say it's negatively oriented, and we can just reverse the orientation if necessary. All right. So that's a definition that we're going to use moving forward. There's a you know picture of a lumpy sphere and some some vectors pointing outward from it. Now, the the thing I'm going to leave you with, I'm not going to do this, but you can we can construct non-orientable surfaces, non-orientable closed surfaces. And you can probably guess how to do this now. So this is an example of a non-orientable closed surface. This is called a Klein bottle. And I'd like you to think this through, but then you can look this up on the internet if you want to. But the Klein bottle is constructed out of a rect rectangle as follows. So first you take these two edges just the way we did and you glue them together to form a Mobius strip, okay? And so at this point, you end up with our beautiful picture of our Mobius strip, right? And we can put the red gluing portion right there again. Again, it doesn't matter where you put the glued portion because the strip is it's the same at every point. It looks the same. It's just a matter of perspective that I've put the twist kind of over here, right? Um, and then what we're going to do, the next step, is to glue together these two edges with the, actually the same orientation. Okay, so how's that going to work? Well, I'm going to color code these a little bit differently because they're already in the Mobius strip. And so at this point, um, the blue one, we'll say, is the edge that starts down here. And as it goes around, look what happens to this edge. It ends up up here. Okay, it's going in this direction. So we take that one. The green one is going to start up here the green one, sorry. The green one's going to start at that point where we just left off, right? So as we glue this together, this picks up here and it comes around and meets right here. And what's the orientation of this one? So it should be, so if they're both emanating from this ray, then they're going the same way, right? So it's going this way. And so you need to now in your mind figure out, remember in topology, in this area of math where the Mobius strip lives, um, you're allowed to infinitely stretch out the material. And so the material here is the inside of this rectangle, which has become the inside of this strip, right? So it's become the inside of the strip. You're allowed to infinitely stretch this and to what you want to do now is try to fold this over so that this portion meets up with the blue portion 
but it's got to be done in a way that it like glues here to there and everything's got to get glued together in the proper orientation okay and so after that identification of the green with the blue the surface that you get is called a Klein bottle and that Klein bottle is non-orientable it's a closed surface but it's non-orientable and it turns out the Klein bottle cannot be constructed in three dimensions so the Klein bottle needs a fourth dimension R4 to be realized and as you work through this as you think about this you know it's a little mind-blowing but think about it um, you'll understand why I think so there's another way to actually consider the Klein bottle and that is to first glue these together to make the cylinder so if you glue those together if you glue the blue and the green together first what you end up with is a cylinder and these are glued together the same orientation right so that's nice and then what's left though um, now you have these two boundary curves one's oriented this way and the other is oriented the other way and those need to be again stretched out twisted glued together and so whichever way you think of this the gluing has to happen in a fourth dimension and you end up with a non-orientable climb bottle all right and so please think about that try to construct it in your mind and then feel free to google it and or even ask me about it but that's a non-orientable closed surface